Hey everyone, my name is Drew, and we're here, and this is going to be week number 7, I believe, of the UPBA Warp against Lux and his uh, team that I'm sure is some kind of a Wii reference, I'm not sure. In any case, we're here, and we have a really, really fun team. We are going to be bringing, once again, the Smooth Rock Mill Tank, as well as a Sandrar Sandslash. Now, it's going to be really interesting as well, because I do think this team just in general operates really well under webs, and this is going to be the, the debut of... Verizian, but Verizian felt kind of important for something. I'm sure whatever it was, it was very important. But honestly, it did feel like some one of my best switches into a lot of special hits on the team. So my team really didn't have a lot of special defense, and this is gonna probably gonna be one of the best ways to kind of get some tempo on the team and kind of try to figure some things out. I think if anything, it helped me wear down certain things. This is a subset, so I can kind of get a sub on things, try to get uh, some free turns, and kind of go from there, m maneuver the team around, and kind of work something out. Other than that, I mean, other things are pretty obvious. We can spot see Kirim this week and a kind of seismic toad that glues the team together. I did end up leading off with a seismic toad. Now, I did not expect to go for turn one rocks or anything, but I thought, um, for most lead options like a potential mudsdale, I can pressure it, and anything else, it kind of protects me against a Mianchao lead, which he does lead off with. But also, most other leads, I can kind of bait in things like a Zapdos. Um, that was kind of my thinking. I can kind of bait in certain things that are going to want to deal with the seismic toad and if i can get a toxic off on them early then they're much more manageable and in the longer to run of the game i think it's going to be super helpful for me uh now we do see a u-turn straight off the bat from this man chow and i tried to gauge out damage my first thought was scarf but uh by the looks of it it wasn't even really kind of uh max offense i think um, I'm not entirely sure even now. I don't think I got Lux's team after the game, so I'm going to not be entirely sure of a bunch of things, but I do end up missing a turn one Toxic, which is honestly super unfortunate because obviously this was really what I was trying to... This is one of the things that I was trying to bait out, right? And this is one of my reasonings for leading Seismitoad, right? I go for the turn one Toxic because I felt like I could kind of bait something in and it's already kind of starting to feel pretty dubious in this moment. But... Does go for Hurricane, and that's a crit Hurricane coming right off of a Mist Toxic, so already feeling not great, but uh, we're going to manage, I mean, we're going to at least try, right? Because we can always miss a Hurricane, we can always try to get something going, but after getting a Toxic up, my next step would be to get Rocks up, and as long as I can, again, put on some pressure with this with this frog uh, yeah i'm considering doing something else because this is already feeling like a disaster i'm already starting to lose the confidence of my convictions and just trying to like see if there if this position is salvageable but honestly this is really looking not great for me however he does miss a hurricane which is pretty strong for me i'm able to get up rocks and i kind of and i believe here i hard expect him so I want to click defog, but I'm kind of, I want to put him in a position where he's forced to KO me. And now that I do have the toxic pressure up, I do feel uh, a little bit emboldened to kind of make some things happen. At this point, now that I have the toxic up, I feel emboldened to kind of uh, just click rocks until I get KO'd. Right? I, I'm, I don't feel like I'm in that bad of a position here. And I feel... I honestly feel not great about this because I'm still uh, multiple turns behind because of the Miss Toxic, because of the Crit Hurricane. It really puts me, it, it really makes me feel behind. Whereas before, it feels like this frog was able to take multiple hurricanes from this Zapdos. Now I'm down to maybe taking one if I'm lucky. And now he's clicked Defog, so he's probably going to hit. And, but at this point, like I said, I'm in a position where I feel free to just go for rocks until I get KO'd. He goes for another Hurricane, avoids it, which is pretty crazy because he just clicked Defog, so my evasiveness is down. Um, it, it's a dead turn for both of us all around. I got to turn to lefties, and I'm starting to feel mildly... I, man, I really start to try to feel hopeful that I can take another Hurricane, but based off of the, the crit damage from earlier, probably not. But obviously, again, if, if I didn't get a crit, and I, and, and I probably have, have another turn of lefties in, in there somewhere, then... Maybe I take another one, but man, is it kind of tough to feel good about this position still. And again, I, I would have had an, an extra tick of Toxic, which would have been fun. But uh, but yeah, my my frog goes down, and by the looks of it, actually, uh, it, it wasn't something that I really thought about in the moment, but it does actually kind of look like uh, I would have been able to... I would have been able to be in a solid position 
if I had an extra tick of Toxic and I was able to take that Hurricane be, um, with the extra HP from not getting crit. So if the Toad was up, that would have been a fun Mon to have a potential sack for. Um, to, to stand up in front of the Zapdos and pick, and have that KO, but oh well. We can go into this thing, and my my main goal is for, is for to be able to take out this, the Zapdos, and then be able to click Sticky Web on the following turn on whatever wants to come in, just give myself up to be able to get up a Sticky Web. That was my bigger goal, but I felt really uh, not great, because I had to click Bug Buzz, obviously. Uh... But I tried to run some calcs. I tried to see if this was a play worth making. I think I was safe, but if this thing was super specially defensive, I don't even think I really got a chance to see any damage on this thing. So, so I just felt a little bit um, uneasy about this turn. I took a little bit longer than I probably should have. It's fine. I was nervous. I was kind of in a not great mood based off of those first couple turns. But, but we're gonna persevere. We do get a KO with that Bug Buzz, and we're now in a position where I can give this Galvantula up in exchange for for webs, and if I stay up, then I can Volt Switch out, I can maybe position myself decently well, I can try to make some things happen here, but uh, the bigger deal is that Rocks are here to stay, he has no more Defog, and I can potentially get up some more Hazards, and we can kind of uh, put some pressure onto the team. Goes into the Dialga, which is fun. Uh, it's honestly... Pretty terrifying to see the Dialga. I have no idea what this thing is going to do, but I'm going to stick to my plan. I'm going to try to get up webs here, and I'm going to try to uh, hopefully not let this thing do too much. Like, I mean, this thing is honestly scary. I don't really know what it does, but it, for all I know, it could be like sub iron press or body press, right? Or sub iron defense is what I meant to say, right? I, th I think that's a set that it does, I think, maybe. I don't know. Either way, this allows me to Volt Switch, especially now that he's revealed Earth Power. This feel, this makes me feel emboldened to, to click uh, Volt Switch, because I can go out into uh, my Verizian, which, given the team that he brought, Verizian is a lot less useful. So Verizian is kind of in a position where I can kind of just switch in on, on whatever kind of special hits I can kind of um, come in on, and just try to like pivot around, get a sub up, maybe get a strong hit off, and kind of maneuver around from there. Other than that, uh, Verzian doesn't really have a role based on the six that he brought. It's really just going to be here to kind of soak up hits from potentially this thing probably more than anything else and just try to try to stop this Dialga in its track, stop it from kind of doing a lot of what it really wants to do, right? Um, it reveals the Flash Cannon and uh, it doesn't do too, too much, at least not enough that uh, I'm really kind of like getting worried here. And I kind of want to feel out this team early, so I think I can get a sub up on this turn just to, again, see see what his instincts are in terms of what he wants to switch in on this, and just see what uh, how, how he really wants to play this interaction here. And honestly, has anybody ever really talked about how weirdly shaped Dialga's head is? It's really weird to see, like, in certain angles. It's, it's fine. We can, we can ignore that. Uh, I don't know why I'm thinking out this turn so much. I guess I'm trying to... Think about whether I want to just go for a raw close combat. I mean, I guess it's a play, but it's not a great one, right? Either way, I'm spoiler. I I think I talked myself into clicking a uh, sub here. But overall, I'm just trying to again just feel out how to play this. But he brings out this thing, and um, I'm really starting to think about how annoying this thing is going to be. I really kind of figure that I would have better answers for this, in my head at least. But we're in a position now where obviously if my best switch into the, to the Alga is going to be this, then it's always going to allow this in, and um, in a way that I didn't really foresee in in thinking this team through, I really have to come up with a, with a plan for how to deal with this, kind of on the spot here. And, and I mean... It, it, it's not like I have nothing for this thing. It's just, it's just I'm starting to kind of feel out how how the flow of this match is going to go for the later turns, right? Because, again, if I'm going to consistently bring this thing on in on Dialga, then how do I play out the, the later turns in a way that I can kind of a c condition him to to kind of uh, think that he knows where my head's at and kind of feel it out for myself in terms of what's going to be the most profitable 
series of plays for me in in the later turns right so these are all kinds of things that i'm thinking through and probably things that i probably should have had had thought through earlier and and um had better solid more solid plans for but uh this is where we are now right in any case mill tank i believe is max special defense uh i don't entirely remember but it seems some, like something i would do in any case it comes in on the scald it does not not a lot of damage so i'm feeling really confident in this um in this thing's ability to kind of just stay in here and if it is kind of the standard av set then i can kind of play some seismic talking seismic toss games here i believe i i honestly don't even remember what i clicked here i think i might have clicked sandstorm raw maybe question mark but if i did then uh i'm then at this point i'm really starting to think about how i'm going to try to maneuver in my my sand slash and really start to claim ko's because with sand and webs there's really nothing on the other team that can kind of stand up to it unless weevil has a clean switch in and even then it's really 50 50 as to whether or not certain things are in place for that to happen right anyway this thing comes in and it's honestly mildly terrifying but uh I really did not expect him to want to click close combat raw. I really kind of expect to see a U-turn here, I think, which is why I go for seismic toss. And this is where I really kind of uh, put two and two together and see that this thing is that I'm faster than this thing. I have no speed on my mill tank, but obviously we're under webs. Oh, because we're knocked off, which it was unfortunate in the moment, but you know, we I really did expect a a U-turn here. And I thought I could kind of take advantage of it, but it's okay it's okay we'll be okay however again i i do kind of realize that this thing is not really as strong as i had feared in team building and it looks like i can take some hits if i if i just kind of milk drink up and i and i really do kind of want to feel out what this thing wants to do and especially again because i really do kind of feel the courage about convictions here where i really do think he's going to want to click u-turn for the regenerator and for the positioning and I don't think he wants to give this thing up too, too early. So I really do feel emboldened to kind of click Milk Drink and kind of gauge out damage, gauge out what he wants to do, and kind of just feel out these early turns. If he goes for your turn, which again, even watching this back surprises me that I just like stood stood there as a mill tank um, and just kind of am doing my thing. Just vibe in here, right? But we're in an okay position. We're not doing the worst goes into the, goes into uh this boy and anyway i want to cash out th th the point that i was trying to make earlier uh seeing that seeing that it was slower than my mill tank uh, under webs really made really crystallized certain things in my head because i was really worried most of all about a scarfed mian Xiao. or not worried so much as just like that was the thing that i was considering most in my head but as soon as I saw that it wasn't scarfed and that uh, it was slower than my mill tank on underwebs, it really, I mean, obviously it makes me wonder, like, what the heck the, the, the item is. But it's really started to make me kind of think about what the item was. I think, I think I ultimately ended up on, it might have been just, just AV Regenerator. Uh, I, I don't even think at this like to this day i know but that's i think my my best operating guess even now i play this a little bit recklessly just assuming that, that i'm going to take some hits but again i really want to get as much damage onto this um onto this slow king as possible because i do all, all of this damage is mostly going to stick obviously regenerator is a thing and i'm going to have to be very wary of that but but the but the lower that i can keep this thing the easier it's going to be to manage later on in the game and this thing is honestly going to be one of the biggest things for me to want to deal with and i don't feel particularly pressured um by his team against my mill tank right i feel pretty confident that i can just kind of stay in here milk drink up kind of deal some damage onto the team and kind of set up my sand slash and my other mons in the back for for later i really feel like i don't i don't feel the need to to really rush things unnecessarily and i kind of feel like i can play this slowly with mill tank again he he does have this regenerator core which is going to be annoying but with sandstorm with with seismic toss i can kind of um pressure them in in a way that's consistent and in a way that 
is going to put me in a better position for the later game. And that's really what I'm kind of angling for. Those, those are the kind of positioning decisions that I'm trying to make now that I'm hoping pay off in the later game, right? And I'm also thinking through how many turns of Sandstorm, as you guys just saw me, me, me looking through. Because I, um, if he's going to give me a chance to get up a fresh set of Sandstorm, then I'm going to try to hold the line with Miltank long enough that I'm going to be able to be able to do that in a little bit. And then once I'm in that position to get a fresh Sandstorm up, then I'm really feeling like I'm in a position to to make things happen here, right? But I'm still, but but it's again, it's still game of positioning. I'm still trying to figure out, I'm still trying to figure that out in a way that really feels good and and, and profitable for for the later game. But I feel not far away from from putting those pieces together, if that makes sense, right? And again, I just feel like not particularly pressure, right? He's, he's going to play these games where he's, where he tries to get this um th this regenerator damage off, which is fine for me, right? I really do feel like uh i really do feel like if he's gonna give me all, all these turns and i'm just gonna take him and we're gonna kind of make some things happen however now the mudsdale comes in and it, and it and i trigger stamina with uh with my mill tank and now i don't feel great i no longer feel great about this even though i guess i i click toxic um we're kind of seeing in a few seconds why that is not the best play but um but I really want to make him make his plays here. I, I, I want him to reveal his hand a little bit. It goes for a body press. And I believe it does just a bunch. Yeah, it does a ton. I, I, I'm, I, at, at this point, I'm probably getting a little bit too complacent. I'm probably playing a little bit uh, too fast and loose here. But uh, I'm... Oh, my God. If I if I risk this thing for Sansar... Yeah, I don't think I do. He, he, even watching back, that's that's too wild to play for, for, for me to make in this scenario, right? I think I'm running cows thinking about whether my my Galvanic can come in. Oh, do I really give this thing up for Sandstorm? Honestly, I don't remember. We'll see. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll find out together, friends. Um, I, yeah, I, I guess I give this thing up for Sandstorm. However, however, I actually think that's a little bit deceiving. Maybe? Question mark? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this is the turn that he goes for rest, which makes me a little bit more panicky because uh, now... Now... Uh... The toxic isn't going to stick, which means the damage doesn't stick. Which means uh, I really have to figure out a way to damage this thing. And quickly. I really have to figure that out quickly. I think at this point, I'm just trying... Um, at this point, I guess I really do feel like I'm comfortable get, just giving up my sand slash for... Or sorry, giving up my... My mill tank to a potential body press here. But... Uh, it's not great. Oh, I think I did run some calcs. I, I'm, I'm remembering now. I'm... I, I think I did run some calcs, and I figured out that if my sand slash gets up a sword stands, that I can take out a plus two, um, I can take out a plus two mudsdale, but I have to like put it in range, and by, and to put it in range, I need to, uh, I need to get that little bit of oh, maybe it was for energy ball as well, but regardless, if I remember correctly, I think what i was thinking through was i had to get this this mud still in range by getting a seismic toss off to to potentially set up my my other mons so i think i needed s some more damage in order for for Galvantula to to potentially, to potentially do what i needed to do or for my sand slash to, to be able to do what i needed to do so that's what i was doing there but it does withdraw it does withdraw so we won't get to see what that does goes into goes into the Dialga and obviously I'm going to do the damage but uh, it doesn't feel like I'm in any position to to have to give up my 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 Galvantula this early because I still have the I still have the Verzine in the back I can still put on a ton of pressure here however it's going to take a little bit of maneuvering and we're going to see what that means in a second but I believe I just clicked Volt Switch on this turn. We'll see. We'll we'll find out together once again. It does look like I'm calcing something. I don't entirely remember what I'm calcing here. But believe me, I'm 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 figuring something out. I'm I'm plotting. I'm scheming. Um. We'll see. But I'm, I'm pretty positive I clicked Volt Switch on this turn because first thing does feel like a pretty strong, like, easy play for me to make here. But again, I do have to consider. I'm gonna play out the, 
uh, the following turn, right? And and this was what I was talking about before about about subbing up, trying to like feel out what all each other's play, and just trying to figure out in real time like how I'm gonna maneuver these these turns, right? Because I believe I pull a double here, and and I think I'm only and, and I believe I only feel like I can pull a double because of those earlier turns, but if I'm not mistaken. I, yeah, I, yeah, I don't even think about it. You can see how how quickly I'm clicking, and I immediately expect the uh, the thing to come in. So without wasting any time, I just go straight into sand slash and uh, try to really put some pressure on because I do have the sand up. I probably don't have as many turns of sand as I would like. I always feel like I, like like I see sand turns in a way that uh, makes me uncomfortable. But you know what? Sand Slash is still out here. We still have webs up, which is going to be huge, honestly. And it's going to really enable my Sand Slash to do a lot, especially because uh, this team is a slower one. And especially since we saw some speed vis-a-vis -vis like the um, like the mill tank. Because if the mill tank is able to, to be the, the Mian Chao, then the most likely this thing is too. I don't think this is quite as fast as the mill tank, but speeds are comparable and we'll be able to figure something out, right? We'll... Ultimately, like we'll, like we'll see, but we're in here. Oh, I just run out of sand entirely. That's that's great. I, man, I I literally always do this, and I get frustrated every time. But here we are doing it again. It's fine. It's really not the biggest deal in the world because of webs, right? Webs are kind of a saving grace here, and sand slash is really in an, in a really strong position, and especially because again, um, oh, I believe I clicked sword dance because I expected something to come in, but. Webs really are the saving grace here because uh, this sand slash is fast enough and I think his team is slow enough that uh, I don't even really need sand as much as I need as, as I can just deal with having webs here. I don't even remember if this thing outspeeds. I, I doubt it, right? It would have to be pretty fast in order to, to, to really outspeed, but I am able to just pick up a KO. However, 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 the main reason for me wanting to click sand or sword sands was because I needed to be at plus two to really threaten the to really threaten the the thing. Um, what is that thing called? Uh, the mudsdale. The mudsdale. Right, right. The mudsdale. In order for me to really threaten that, I had to. And actually, in real time, I could probably check that out now because this is probably looks like it's gonna take uh, some time to really figure out. I'm gonna try to see if I could find. This sand slash that I use. Yeah, this is the sand slash that I use, and the sand slash. Oh, it's not quite as fast as the as the mill tank, but it's only it's only a little bit slower than the mill tank that I brought this week. So again, my think like the general thinking here, right, is if if um mill tank is able to it's out speed the, the man chow under webs then sand slash is probably going to be able to tell us how to speed the man the man chow under webs we're, it's not entirely certain at this point still but we're here right weave all comes in weave all is really scary it takes rocks which is also really scary but it does look like i take most things right like i definitely take a nice shard i definitely take a <laughs> but i consider switching out um, it does look like I take an ice shard. It does look like I take an icicle crash, maybe. But regardless, <laughs> it depends on a lot. Let's for triple axle. Lands the first two. If he misses the third, then I think Sand Slash wins from here. Lands all three. It's pretty not ideal. It's pretty not ideal to say the least. But um, but again, with Sand Slash at plus two and under webs, uh. It's a very, very strong chance that that uh, Sand Slash can potentially just win the game from here. However, this did honestly make me think that the Sand Slash was scarfed, um, and especially for my team, it made a ton of sense, which is why I felt pretty confident going into um, this Kyurem here. And I believe I just clicked Dragon Dance right away. I, I thought either one of two things was going to happen, right? I thought either it's going to be banded or scarfed. Either it, it's going to be um, locked into something that's going to be beneficial for me in the longer run. But now I'm in a position where I can drag and dance up, and now I outspeed the entire team under webs. And um, whether, whether this thing is scarfed or not, right? As, as long as this thing is choice in some way, then I um, I outspeed the, the, the entire team under webs. 
And at plus one, I'm in a position to do a ton of damage. In a position to do a ton of damage. And I just click Fusion Vault. There's no real need to predict anything. I don't really think he's going to go into the Mudsdale. Even, even if he does go into the Mudsdale, it doesn't really feel like the biggest deal in the world. I can manage. But, uh... Fusion Bolt just gets me damage onto the team, and Kiram is, is in a really, really good position to do what he needs to do. And I, and I also believe that um, even if even if even if this Weavile wasn't uh, wasn't locked in anything under webs, if I get a Dragon Dance up, and I, I should be able to take a low kick, and then I and then with the Dragon Dance up, I'm still in a position to win the game. Mancha comes in, honestly made me concerned that this thing was, was like fake out or something, and I was gonna like fake out, switch out, and then like I was gonna put me in a really shitty position. But uh, I can just fusion bolt this thing, and we can maneuver from here. Mudsdale is still asleep, and it's gonna be asleep for a turn. I'm confident enough that I'm gonna be able to KO the the Slow King and um. And now that I have to be the Weavile, I should be able to always hit the Weavile, especially after another round of rocks. I should be okay. I, I, I believe I cocked it out too. I believe I take a, I believe I take a, uh, an Ice Shard like always. Like Ice Shard does not even do that much, especially if it is Scarfed. And I believe I was bulky enough to take another hit at top of that. It's all, it's all academic here, right? Uh. We're going to take this one turn at a time. In comes this Mudsdale. This Mudsdale is going to stay asleep. And I'm going to be able to click Icicle Spear. And it does look like Icicle Spear is going to have to hit twice. But as long as I get a good, a good sleep toggle roll, then I should be able to win the game. Which is honestly, oh right, because this is where he reveals the Citrus Berry. And that's honestly just atrociously bad for me. Uh, and especially coming right off of how that Saint Slash played out, because Saint Slash was in a position to win the game straight up from there, from that position. I don't think Saint Slash could have lost the game if, if, um, Weavile missed that third triple axle hit, right? If. Weavile missed one triple axel, then I think I potentially win the game from there. And now I'm in a position where I just I'm just one good sleep talk roll away from also winning this game with Kiram. Right? And he lands Earthquake and it KOs. Which is also funny because it's a crit. I don't uh, I mean now looking back on it, it might have mattered, but what honestly would have mattered more is again he landed all three triple axles on my Kyurem as well. If he had missed any of those triple axles, then I probably would have been healthy enough to take an earthquake from from, from the Mudsdale and be able to hit it again. But now it's really dawning on me. Wow, I think I just lost the game, right? Um, because now I just never beat the Slow King, right? And that is bad. That sucks a lot. Uh, I think this game is pretty much over. But. I thought a lot about uh, how this game ended, and man, a few really bad things had, had to happen, right? Obviously, there's a turn one mix, Miss Toxic into a Hurricane Crit. Like, that just started the game off in a, on a really sour note. Then he he lands every one of his triple axles, which just didn't feel great as well, because again, you saw how much that, that's, that Sand Slash was taking. Sand Slash could have, Sand Slash could not have, could, could have not only um, taken two triple axle hits, but then it, it could have clicked Leech Life in return and gotten so much HP back as well. It probably would have gotten back over half off of a Leech Life, and then, and then it would have been in a prime position to, t to also take hits, right? So like, imagine a scenario where I'm up against the Mudsdale, and and I and I have to take a hit for the Mudsdale. Sand Slash probably takes those hits and gets like two plus two Earthquakes off. Even if the first one doesn't do it, which I'm pretty positive one plus two Earthquake does it. But even in a scenario where, where Sand Slash has to take a hit, um, Sand Slash is in a much better position to do it. And then again, um, you get just 
th three triple axle hits on my Kyurem as well, which puts me weak enough that a Sleep Talk Earthquake KOs me. And even then, right? He could have just not rolled well with, with, with Sleep Talk. So, so, so many like points where his where his uh, RNG had to go really, really well for for him to win the game. But I do think that uh, I was in a position. I was in multiple positions to win the game, but the game's gonna end because I can't break the dang slow king. Uh, version came, it did some things. It uh, got hard walled by the slow king, which I always kind of struggled against and it was never really a great time. But again, I felt there were, I felt like there were multiple points where I just put all the pieces together and it just never really worked out. It was a fun game, but I really, wish that I'd been able to win this. I was playing another undefeated team. I really felt like I had the team to do it. I really felt like I had all the pieces together to do it. But yeah, again, it just it just didn't feel great to have the game kind of all come together in that way and not come out on the other end of it with a win. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the UPBA as well as more other things to come really, really soon. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching. And once again, out.